Welcome! I'm Yuan Nielsen. And I'm Lincoln Murphy. And this is Impact Weekly. We're here to help you make your customers successful. Each week, we answer your most pressing customer success management questions by relying on our years of experience with companies around the world. Let's get this going. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. It's time for Impact Weekly. And guess what? We have another question to go through. Here it comes. Can you advise me on a tricky situation I'm facing? One of my larger customers have been through a lot of change in the past couple of months. Several users have been laid off and our main contact has quit. What can I do here? Ooh. Okay. Not, yeah, not an ideal situation, of course. No. Uh, but but I think we should, um, as always, like uh, okay, uh, yeah. Let's let's try to analyze this. What's going on here? And um, let's look at a few scenarios. What could be behind this? Yeah. Um, I think it's, uh, of course, maybe this this sounds quite dramatic, but some some sometimes or it's quite common that we we face this one way or the other uh with with a big uh, or with with working with a, a portfolio of customers uh, things happen on the customer side it can be smaller things and uh, as it sounds here uh, bigger things right yeah for sure i mean you know i think change is inevitable right i mean i think exactly more than anything and, you know, it sounds funny to say that out loud and, and to bring that up as a, you know, kind of point zero here, like, you know, the starting point. But I think sometimes there's, I don't think anybody would say, you know, out loud that, that we assume nothing will change. But I think sometimes we kind of, we get, we get stuck in a, a rut or, or, you know, stuck yeah. in our ways or, or whatever. And we kind of think, yeah, things are, things are always going to be this way. This is the this is the person I'll always talk to at this customer or whatever. And again, this isn't something you consciously do, but I think there's an expectation sometimes that, that everything will stay the same and that's just not true. So we need no. to like just go into everything, assuming things are going to change. So I yeah. think that's like point zero there. <clears throat> no, absolutely. And, and, and sometimes there are big major changes, right? So mm -hmm. I think a few examples that I've been, th been I've seen myself and I, I know a lot of, a lot of uh, people I talk to and the customer success managers and, and heads of customer success I, I talked to been through it. And that's of course, sometimes a company becomes acquired uh, of, an, of another company. That's a major thing uh, in most cases. Uh, new new leadership team, uh, maybe the the completely new leadership team for from uh, on the customer, uh, and of course there are scenarios where cust customers go bankrupt or they are having go through real financial troubles. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean those are realities that happen uh, on and off uh, in uh, when you manage a, a portfolio of customers, of course. Absolutely, I mean, and and some of those you know some some of those are are good you know if, if if you if a company has acquired another company or if a company has been acquired you know that's probably not seen as a bad thing um certainly you know the the bankruptcy or 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 whatever yeah. that could be that's <laughs> probably not going to be a more positive thing but but no. No, nevertheless whatever the changes are usually what comes with that are some pretty big structural changes but one other thing that i you know in, in terms of like the you know a change that happens also relatively often is not necessarily with one customer, but we, but we experience this in a portfolio of customers fairly often is you, you're working with maybe an earlier stage company that, that gets some new funding and, yeah. and that's a big change. But what comes with that change is maybe, you know, they're, they're, they start to mature as an organization. Um, they they bring in you know professionals to run the company versus the original founders, yeah. Right, and now you have more structure. You have you have people that are um, that are building. Well, now you might actually start building silos, right? right? Where every everybody was sort of working together. Now you have this structure, but what comes with that is not necessarily um, you know positive in terms of collaboration. All those things that can just happen with a company that that is just simply evolving. 
So exactly. even right there, you're working with the same company. Maybe you even have the same points of contact, but internally their yeah. company has changed. You need to be right. aware of that. Yeah. Yeah. So, so actually this, this question is, is a bit pointy because it's this quite, quite dramatic situation, but sure. it actually applies all, always. To, you, you need to be aware of the things going on and there will happen things on the customer side. Yes. Yeah, I think that that's it. I mean, you just have to know change is inevitable. It yeah. will happen for better or worse. And and you just need to th keep that in mind so that you're not ever just like, okay, this is the way it is and this is the way it'll always be. Yeah. Well, let's uh, let's get back to the the question the scenario of this question here. So, several users have been laid off, our main contact has quit. Mm. It sounds like this person almost got it after the, the after the fact. Like, yeah, they they may they may may notice that the the main contact has changed LinkedIn uh, profile or something, and and then they just realized uh, a lot of people was laid off. Or so so how how what what do we do in this situation like like this from the question uh, the person asking the question here? Well, okay, so a couple things to to me. Um, <laughs> You have to, I, I'm kind of, you know, giggling because like you said, you know, their LinkedIn profile and this reminds me like, you know, that is something to pay attention to. And if yeah. you notice changes to somebody's LinkedIn profile before they actually make a move, um, you, the changes are probably meaning that they will make a move. Most people don't just update their LinkedIn profile for fun. Um, like, yeah. you know, that could be an indication of something. So, uh, something to pay attention to every once in a while with your points of contact. But I think the main thing here is established situational awareness. What's really going on? Because mm. if I'm hearing, yeah. okay, so my point of contact quit, um, you know, I'm, I'm, where am I getting that information from? Might be them, you know, it, yeah. it might not be them. It might be somebody else that's telling me this. If I'm hearing that people have been laid off. I'm hearing that just a few people have been laid off. Then, you know, a layoff often comes with like actual layoffs often mean yeah. some financial issue at the company. Now it could be redundancy in terms of like, you know, they acquired a company. And so now that we have, you know, multiple people doing the same job, so mm. we can downsize, but Often a layoff, an actual layoff is, is something that comes with something negative happening in the company. So the question is, if it was just a couple of people that were laid off, were they really laid off? Were they fired? Mm -hmm. Were they, were there reasons for, you know, that they were fired? Um, and so this is where you have to take a step back and figure out what's going on with the company because yeah. you can't just necessarily take the word, especially like if, if you heard, and I've seen this play out yeah. in reality a few times where, um, the point of contact leaves the company messages, the CSM on mm. LinkedIn and says, Hey, just, you know, by the way, I'm not at that company anymore. So I'm not going to make mm. our meeting, you know, on Thursday. <laughs> um, yeah. and, and, you know, by the way, they laid off half the, you know, half, half yeah. of our team. Well, yeah. that's, that's, that, that is Intel, right. but it may be skewed. Right. Yes. So you really want to make sure that you figure out what's really going on. And I think that's, that's one of those things where we have to take that step back and, and start doing, you know, put on your detective hat and go figure out what's really going on with the company. You can't just take what you hear, even if yeah. it's from a person that was affected by this, or in this case quit, like yeah. you can't just take that at face value. No, I think that's really a key point here to, to not be, this person might be, of course, emotional, and it can be a lot of like bad blood and stuff. So they might talk down the the, the customer right. in, in in any way they can. Um, so that might may be the case that things are really bad, but it can also be that uh, it just it was uh, specific to this person or this team. Um, so it's really important to to find more uh, contacts if you don't have them. And I think that's always the case that you should not have just one point of contact, of course, um, because then you are, I mean, many ways uh, in a not not a great position usually with the customer. So, so here we here we need to we need to uh, find more people to talk to, um, and 
let, let's play out this scenario that the, it, it is actually the all more more or less all of our users have been, have been laid off main contact has quit and that can be a scenario you face as a customer success manager you basically you we have to start off from start all over with this customer um, yeah. <laughs> i know it's not ideal but uh, let, let's let's take a look at that one and see what how can we help this person if that's the case and, and what are the steps here um, the first one we i think we covered a little bit to to we need to understand uh, what's going on uh but but then what yeah i mean i think I, I say, you know, don't be afraid to, to reach out to, um, to other people. So, I mean, if, if, if your point of contact has, has left, um, you know, you, who else can you reach out to? Hopefully you now there's some things you need to do before you get to this point. And so I, mm -hmm. I know that that doesn't answer the question. Like if you're in this situation, you haven't done this, but you need to have some sort of redundancy in, in your contacts. You know, if, if you have a main point of contact, have backup contacts, you know, yeah. so you just ask them, Hey, if anything should happen to, you know, you're out sick, um, you, you know, you, you find a better job. <laughs> um, who, who else should I talk to? Right. And most, most mm. of the time they're going to give you, you know, points of contact. You can also say, you know, give me uh, a couple of people as an emergency contact, just in case, um, depending upon your, you know, the type of product that you, that you, sell and you know how how sort of mission critical it is that becomes even more important um mm -hmm. and they'll be much more willing to probably even even give you that up front without you asking but you should always look for some redundancy there and i even have sort of a a, a tactic where it's like i want you as the csm to reach out to you know to to have you know at least three different people that you you have direct contact with on your customers team and i want you to also have your your boss maybe your head of cs reach out to to three people on on their team it can, yeah. there can be some overlap there with the people that you talk to um and then mm -hmm. you know maybe even your ceo uh or you know some some executive level in your company does the same and so you have these multiple layers of and it, again it depends on you know if you're a point solution in a marketing department you may not that may not make a lot of sense but certainly the mm -hmm. the, the the wider use your product has inside the, the, the customer company, the more you want to yep. have redundancy at multiple levels. Um, right. so that, so that if, if there is any systemic disruption, like you're yeah. probably still going to have people that you can reach out to again, that's, yeah. that's something you need to start doing today immediately, but that's not going to solve your problem if you're already in this situation. Right. So of I course. think at that point you yep. just have to say, don't be afraid to reach out to people that maybe you've never yeah. talked to before to figure out what's going on. But that's that's a huge point there. I think we should just just to follow up on that sure. one. I think I've seen this so many times that you when you talk when you do that type of 3 by 3 if you have that type of many levels and layers of, of contact with the customer you will get my experience is that you get different you get you get different perspectives of on a topic or our situation as a as a supplier to them. Or their goals, or uh, it's such an important way to get the perspectives right, because um, you will, um, if you have good dialogue with these people on these different levels, and you get together in a room and you kind of work out the plan together with the customer, I think those the, you you will really nail uh, where this customer is going. If we have issues with the customers or uh, how they view us, and uh, I think it's. Um, that we, we have to get those perspectives uh, regularly with the customer. It, it makes all the difference. It does. It does. It's super important. You, you, you really don't want to just have, and again, this really applies as you get in, you know, if you have a more complex product used by, you know, multiple yeah, departments and stuff, for you, sure. you really don't want to just have one person or even one department's perspective mm. on things because <clears throat> this is not, not because they're doing anything wrong. It's just, it's just a limited perspective, right? Yeah. And so it's harder for you to have that, that full view of what's going on if you're really only getting that information from one person. So and aside yeah. from just the redundancy, you do want to have um, m multiple contacts so you can get, so you can just have better intel on, on your customer, frankly. Yeah. And they will filter things for, I mean, what they say. So when you, you kind of unfilter things, when you hear it from, when you have several people on your side talking to several people on their side, you kind of, you kind of see where they are kind of hiding or not telling you everything or, or 
willful or not, they they do filter out what they want to tell you. So this makes this I think creates transparency on where we stand with the customer and where they want to go, and that's what we really want. So, right, I think that's think, a great thing. To, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I just want to. You said you know that, that this isn't that they're filtering this stuff. Um, it's coming from their perspective. It's not necessarily you know, nefarious, right? They're not trying no. to hide things. And I think that's a, we need to keep that in mind. Like nobody's, I mean, not, I'm not saying nobody, but you know, maybe, maybe sometimes they do try to hide things, but <laughs> yeah. in general, it's just that they're coming from a certain perspective. They have their, their, you know, their goals where they're coming from. And so you're going to get sort of a skewed yeah. vision of what's really going on. And, and we just want to make sure we have a, a more complete um, idea of what's, of what's going on, a more complete idea, picture of reality, um, than just, you know, one person or one department's, um, perspective. So that's, yeah. All. Yeah. And, and it's really for, for both better and worse. Sometimes we believe we're in a better, worse situation than we are, uh, when, and, and we realize we actually have really good, uh, potential here and we can do a lot more. And sometimes we believe we're in a really good position, but then we talk to more people and we realize we're actually not, uh, in a, such a good position as we, we thought we were. So. Uh, I think it's always, always good to to learn more there, uh, and, and as you say, get 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 these let, three by three. Uh, I think it's a good way to look at it. Um, do we have do we have that? We will have a good, unfiltered view on our 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 relationship with the customer, basically. Exactly, but I would say one thing we need to we need to think about here um, is okay. So let's say we are in this situation, yeah, uh, where you know, we, 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 we did lose a lot of users. We lost our point of contact. You know, maybe that means our champion, um, our admin, whatever, like somebody that, that, you know, that has, has, that we've been working with, um, that has been advocating for us internally and, or sometimes, um, we've been working with somebody that may have been, mm, let's say not, super effective in their role. Mm -mm. Yeah. Maybe they brought our product in, um, but they were not really the champion that we wanted or (laughs) hoped for. (laughs) And, and, you know, so now now we are in a situation of um, working with a new team. um, Exactly. And we have an opportunity here. This is actually an opportunity to maybe reposition reposition our product with them, right? reposition our CSM or our yeah. CSMs or whoever is on our team who may have been positioned, you know, incorrectly. Uh, maybe, maybe the person, our point of contact kind of thought of our CSMs as just, you know, or their CSM is just an assistant, yeah. right? Or they only turned to them when they had a problem. They were just sort of positioned as a problem solver. Now we have the opportunity to reposition our CSM with, with them uh, as, as more of that strategic partner. So we can, right. you know, this isn't always a bad thing. In fact, this can no. be a really good thing, especially if we have been positioned incorrectly. Yeah. And of course we have, I mean, if they haven't canceled or terminated the contract with us, we have, we have a commercial, we have an agreement together to work together. Uh, we have the history, uh, whether, I mean, it, ca- it could be that th- there's issues there, but so there is, there's a lot of, a lot of things to build on. Uh, but there, there's also we need to realize also that maybe maybe this team was let go for a reason. Maybe we don't want to be too associated, or we need to reposition ourselves. Mm-hmm. Maybe if we were too associated with the the team or the person that was let go, or or, or uh, that where they made this change. I, I had a situation where uh, a few years back, where actually a customer. Uh, there was a new manager coming in and they became a customer and they were adding all things and they were buying basically any, everything we had. Uh, and then this manager was, was uh, fired hmm. and they actually suspected him of fraud and they asked about <laughs> our relationship with him and so on. So, uh, so we were clearly not in a posi- great position there when they, when they, no. when they, when they wanted to do the restart. <laughs> yeah. Um, when, when they come, when they come to you and ask, Hey, are you, are you our vendor simply because of like fraud? Yeah. That's not a great, that's not a great start. It's wow. an uphill. Yeah. It's a little bit. Yeah. That's a challenge. That's a challenge. Yeah. 
So, so we need to also realize that the, the, uh, we, we are restarting things. Uh, they, our super user left, uh, a lot of our users left, maybe, maybe even the manager that, or the, the person that, that signed the, the contract with us have left. Uh, so we also are on, um, we are on, uh, I mean, it's a shade. I mean, it's of course, uh, we need to realize also that we are being questioned here. Um, right. right. But there is a lot of positive as well that we can build on, uh, and we can, of course, work out. Uh, we can fix things that been haven't been working as well. Absolutely, but I think so. This is where you have to. So we talked about situational awareness with like what's going on with the company. We also need to go back and, and establish situational awareness with um, their current sort of the the state of the customer in terms of their 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 relationship with us. So yeah. you know, this is where we need to just make sure that we understand. You know, whether you have a health score or you know, success factor or whatever you're using to sort of say mm -hmm. whether or not a customer is healthy, uh, whether they're, they're moving in the right direction. We need to reestablish that so we can figure out like where, where are they as a customer. Um, yeah. And then we can go to them and say, you know, whatever that is. And, you know, if they were on a, a, a positive vector or if mm -hmm. they were healthy or if they were not Whatever that is, we need to we need to get clear on that so we can go to them and say, all right, well, here's where you are. Um, mm. Here's where we know you need, you know, originally this is where we, you know, these were the goals that we understood that you had. Yeah. We need to reestablish those goals, make sure that's, you know, that those are either still your goals or you have new ones and, you know, basically start to put together a success plan to take you from where you are to where you need to go. So now yeah. you know, we come in instead of saying like, hey, you know, we have this is our product. This is, uh, you know, try to, you know, re you know, like introduce the new feature or the features and functionality that we have to the new team. Mm. It's really to come in and say, Hey, um, we want to make sure that we understand what you're trying to accomplish so we can make sure that you're using our product, uh, as efficiently yeah. as possible to reach those goals oh, that yeah. if you come in trying to, again, you know, be product first, you're coming into an organization that's, that's had some ma pretty major changes they're not necessarily going to want to hear about your product. In fact, they might be like, uh, uh, not right now. And then they might even start looking at alternatives because, you know, yeah. new, new leadership, new people coming in will often, you know, like to bring tools that they've used previously yeah. with them. So, That's a def yeah. yeah, so it becomes a, a big risk. Uh, so we need to make sure that we come in and say, hey, you know, recognize that some changes have been made internally. Um, you know, we're here to make sure that you reach your goals. Um, Let's resync on those and make yeah. sure that you're using our product. So it just depends on how you approach this. That's the approach that I think you, you need to take always, but especially yeah. in a situation like this. Yeah. And <clears throat> to, to piggyback on that, I think timing here is, is also, you need to be sensitive around timing here because if, if there's been a lot of chaos and, and uh, things happening on the customer, if you push this too hard, maybe they are not even open to talk, to sit with you and, and go through. Uh, uh, that's on, on one side. And on the other side, if you leave this too long, as you said, uh, they might, they, they won't even think of us and they will, they will look at their alternative or what they used before or what the new manager has been doing previously. Totally. So timing is, is really sensitive in this, in this scenario. And you need to not, not be too, I mean, if you're pushing too hard, too early, you might not get their attention or you might, might, uh, backfire. Uh, but if you leave it hanging for too long, uh, there's a obvious risk here. So. It's a, right. it's a sensitive moment with the customer. It is. And there's no, there's no right or wrong. I mean, there, there's, there's, there ends up being, of course, a wrong way to do it, but we can't know to your point. No. You can't know exactly. So one of the things I recommend is um, if you, if you've, ha if you've noticed a change or you've, you've been told there's a change, um, you know, I like to reach out and, and introduce myself to the, the new, you know, what would be the new point of contact. Um, you know, within a few days of kind of sort of finding out these changes, but, yeah. but I would, but I would basically do that in a way that orchestrates a later meeting to say, yeah. Hey, um, nice. yeah. I, you know, I, well, I, I see that you're, you've taken over or what, you know, however you want to approach that. But essentially I see that you've taken over, uh, this role, you know, welcome to the team, you know, be careful because you don't know exactly if you don't know exactly what's going on there, you don't want to be like, congratulations, because it may not be like, it may be a good opportunity for yeah. them, but there may be, they may have replaced a bunch of people. And it's just, it's like not really a congratulations type of situation. 
that makes sense? Right. So we just right. want to say, um, you know, I see that you're the new head of customer success there. Great. Um, we'll be working with you. I'm going to, I'm, I just wanted to introduce myself. I'm going to give you a few days to get acclimated. Um, and then I'll reach back out like next week or, you know, mm. in a couple of weeks and we can set up a time to talk, uh, to make sure you guys are, are going to be using our product in a way that is most aligned with your goals or whatever. But basically it's, yeah, I just, I want to make sure that you know that I'm here, <clears throat> but we don't have to talk right now. Right. Exactly. I'll let you, yeah. I'll let you get acclimated. And a lot of times they'll Perfect. actually say, no, no, um, we should talk soon, but you didn't yeah. push for that meeting right now. It's yeah. their choice. And this is, that's a great way. So that's, that's just a little tactic that, that can yeah. help you in situations like that. Perfect. Cool. Uh, let's, um, let's wrap up this question in our three concrete things here. Um, I think we touched on them, but let's summarize for anyone skipping ahead in the podcast. So <laughs> the three things I'll start. Uh, so, First of all, when major things happen on the customer side, get down to the root cause here. What's really going on? And um, that's that's the key first part here. Definitely. And uh, the second thing is get help in restarting the relationship. You know, sea level to sea level. Um, you know, other. You know, your 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 boss to the boss of the person that that is no longer there. But don't be afraid to get help in in restarting the relationship. And last but not least, uh, you have a history with this customer. Make it really your advantage to build uh, upon this change. So that's it. Uh, that's the three things we recommend here. Um, thanks for listening. We'll be soon back with more questions to be answered. All the best. Hey, thanks for listening. Do you want to bring your customer success to the next level? Check out Impact Academy. We have training programs for customer success managers and for leaders in customer success.